Hello, I'm Linda Graham, author of Resilience, Powerful Practices for Bouncing Back from Disappointment, Difficulty, and Even Disaster. In this series of conversations, you'll learn from many experts offering practices helpful to them in recovering their own resilience. In this conversation with David Rico, you'll be learning what you can do when childhood memories throw you for a loop and what you can do when you feel frozen, out of touch with your own inner resources, especially the all-important resource of self-trust, so necessary for being resilient in relationships. Welcome to this conversation, exploring resources for recovering resilience. Today I'm talking with David Rico, good friend, and author of about 20 books, including How to Be an Adult in Relationships, The Five Keys to Mindful Living, and The Five Things We Cannot Change and the Happiness We Find in Embracing Them. Dave is a psychotherapist, as I am. He's a lover of poetry, as I am. And over the years, I've learned how much Dave can approach resilience and well-being from many, many different perspectives. So welcome, Dave. Thank you so much for sharing the time today. Thanks for inviting me. So if we see resilience as capacities to face and deal with life's challenges, to cope well and skillfully with everyday disappointments and even disasters, do you have an example of yourself or someone you know who was facing something challenging, had to bounce back from some adversity, and what was helpful at the time to be able to cope more resiliently? One of the um, techniques that I've been using uh, relates to memories that come up for me and kind of throw me for a loop a little bit like memories of childhood. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I remember instances of emotional or physical abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I can picture certain events occurring, like with, within the household with my mother, mm -hmm. for instance. And uh, I can just be hit by them and feel uh, a kind of um, despair about what happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But gradually, I've evolved uh, a tool of resilience. Mm -hmm. And uh, your book, Bouncing Back, has helped me with many of the tools that I use personally. Thank you. And this particular one, um, I have made the connection between hurtful events from the past, mm -hmm. either from childhood or from past relationships, right. and grief. Mm -hmm. To go to grief about what happened seems more like a path to letting go of the power of that trigger, mm -hmm. rather than to go to oh, how terrible, oh, what a victim I am, or oh, how much others were to blame. Instead mm -hmm. of going in that direction, I go to the realm of grief. Mm -hmm. And in my perspective, grief consists of three feelings. Okay. We are sad about what was hurtful or missing. We are lost. We are angry that something was taken away from us that we believe we should have had. Mm -hmm. And fear that we will never find what we missed out on. Mm -hmm. So what I do now is when a memory comes up, I use this particular tool, okay. which helps me live with the memory more resiliently. Mm -hmm. I ask my three questions then what was I sad about back then? Mm -hmm. And what am I sad about now? Mm -hmm. What was I angry about back then? Probably couldn't express. And what am I angry about now? And what was I afraid of then? And what am, am I afraid of now? Mm -hmm. so I've been attaching those grief questions to each hurtful memory 
Mm -hmm. And I notice that when I do that, I create a new link in my brain mm -hmm. between memory and healing. Mm -hmm. And it really works well um, to kind of um, move me through the past and into the present. Right. Does this make sense? It's a powerful, powerful tool. And as you practice applying that to past memories, can you suggest ways that you or other people could use that ahead of time to sort of create a protection from a new stressor or a new emergency, a new hurt or betrayal? Uh, do you mean when something's happening in the present? In the present or even building a resource to be able to cope with something when it happens in the future? Well, one way is of coping would be to um, deal with it assertively, like to speak up, for instance, and say, ouch, if somebody says or does something that feels hurtful. Mm -hmm. And so I am using that technique when I feel brave enough to use it, okay. <laughs> which may not be all the time. Right. But um, just to have these tools uh, gives me more of a sense of strength. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, the first thing I do is, um, let's use the example of somebody does something that is uh, hurtful, hurts my feelings, let's say. Instead of going to my primitive reaction, which would be retaliation or snubbing mm -hmm. or rejecting the other, Mm -hmm. I go to, let me say, ouch, even out loud, mm -hmm. uh, in whatever form that's going to take, and open a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, you have do you have recommendations of practices when using those tools and even knowing you have those tools? in the moment isn't quite enough. You can feel overwhelmed, you can feel stuck. There's less than resilient coping. And what can you do or what do you recommend people can do in that situation? Uh, sometimes you're, I guess what you're referring to is the times when we're not in touch with our inner resources, mm -hmm. even though we believe we have them or we have learned techniques to access them there are times when you just feel kind of frozen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, you just don't make use of those tools that you've gathered for your toolbox mm -hmm. um, i look at that as uh, a um, an issue of self-compassion Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to accept that one of the givens of my psychological makeup is that there will be times when I won't have my full strengths up and running. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I will just feel kind of crushed. And when that happens, um, I just need to take a time out and just kind of simmer with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, <clears throat> there's a quotation in Walden Pond in which, in which um, Thoreau says, if you s just sit on the ground in the woods, you will notice that gradually little birds and mammals come and join you. Mm -hmm. And so that's the analogy I would use. If I just sit in my inadequacy in the moment, mm -hmm. then the little resources will gradually come and join me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to trust that, that that will happen. Right. So you've been talking about hurt, grief, loss in relationships. Um, do you want to say anything more about how to be resilient in relationships? Well, one of the uh, issues that I've been looking at 
um, recently is triggers. Mm -hmm. How there are certain uh, words, attitudes, gestures, behaviors of people mm -hmm. that trigger a certain re reaction in us. Mm -hmm. And it's helped me enormously to name those triggers, like the Miller's daughter naming Rumpelstiltskin. Mm -hmm. You thereby reduce the power that the trigger has over you. Mm -hmm. So you start to notice where you get triggered. And I made the connection that when I'm triggered, it probably has something to do with one of the three foundations of our reactions, which I um, <clears throat> spell out as S-E-E-C. -E mm -hmm. I tried mm -hmm. to see what's really going on. Okay. And I asked myself these three questions. Is this my S shadow? Is this my E ego? Is mm -hmm. this my other E early life? Mm -hmm. So for instance, somebody does something that uh, <clears throat> upsets me. <clears throat> I realize it's a catalyst of upset, not a cause. Mm -hmm. But here I am, uh, let's say, feeling rejected. Mm -hmm. Then when I ask myself, the, what of this is like myself, that's my shadow, that I'm projecting on the other? Mm -hmm. What of this is my big fat ego that demands that I be accepted by everyone? Right. And what of this is like early life? What happened in childhood that was something like this mm -hmm. that's now being right. instigated up into uh, front and center focus? Mm -hmm. And it would be almost impossible that it wouldn't be one of the three or all three. Yeah. And when I recognize that, I find out where my work is. So a trigger becomes a pathway into my work, mm -hmm. into how I can build my resources, rather than what that other person did that offended me. Right. You now it has gone. It may still have that feeling, but now it has um, activated another part of me, the healing part, that tries to understand what's happening in me right. when I get triggered. Right. right. So I find this uh, a really helpful technique. Absolutely, absolutely. So in a few remaining moments here, um, is there any other additional insight or questions even that you have about resilience? What do, what do people often not pay attention to or think about in terms of resilience? Well, uh, I think it has to do with self-trust. Mm -hmm you uh, might doubt that you have resilience, especially if you have a long history of, a, of an habitual type of reaction. Mm -hmm. For instance, I collapse when somebody doesn't like me, or I get aggressive when somebody doesn't like me, and I, and I keep acting in accord with that ingrained habit, that will, that will uh, prevent me from recognizing that, well, wait a minute, I have, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I can find other ways to handle this. Right. Resilience is about finding those other ways. And secondly, I think fear thrives on few resources, few uh, or no alternatives. Yeah. So in fear, you're imagining how the worst will happen. But when you widen your perspective and start to notice that there are, there are many options that can open to you, you feel less fear. Mm -hmm. fear. Fear thrives on 
there is no resilience. There is no spectrum of responses or of consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is going to fall apart. Thank you for the wisdom of that. <clears throat> because yeah. that is so much what I teach about response flexibility. I know. I've learned so much from you <laughs> on all of this. So thank you, Dave, very much for sharing your wisdom and your warmth with us today. Very much appreciate it. My pleasure, and thanks so much for inviting me. So these conversations will, in this resilience series will all be archived on my website, lindagraham-mft.net. May they be truly useful and helpful to you and yours.